I vår fyller Israel 75 år. Keren Kajemet har i över 120 år utvecklat det moderna landet Israel. Vi har utfört omfattande miljöarbete, träplantering, ökenbekämpning, vattenprojekt, infrastruktur för att kunna välkomna judar från hela världen. Arbetet fortsätter. Nu handlar det om att välkomna utsatta judar från bland annat Ukraina och Ryssland. Din gåva skapar förutsättningar för deras utbildning, försörjning och integration. Fira med oss att den 2000-åriga drömmen om Sion har infriats. Fira Israel 75 år genom en jubileumsgåva. Alla som ger 750 kronor eller mer får ett jubileumsdiplom och en pin med Rolf Wallenbergs diplomatväska. Betala via Swish eller Bankgiro. Märk din betalning Israel 75 år. Nu ser vi utsikten från Sionberget. Precis. Ja. Och eh, nedanför oss ligger ju då eh, gamla stan. Och vi ser eh, Sionporten. Och vi ser lite längre bort ser vi Oljeberget eller Olivberget som det heter på hebreiska. Ja, och eh, Davids stad strax nedanför eh, muren, stadsmuren. Messias ska komma tillbaka. Det är en central tanke i judendomen. Ja. Var kommer han komma tillbaka någonstans? Ja, han kommer ju då att vandra in genom en port som idag är igenmurad. Och den porten den ligger på östra sidan mot eh, Oljeberget. Gyllineporten. Men eh, visst är det vackert, så här i kvällningen, när vi har solen som lyser på gamla stan. Här längre bort på andra sidan eh, dalgången så ser vi King David Hotel. King David, som, King David Hotel var ju britternas högkvarter eh, för det palestinska mandaten och spelade en stor betydelse därför att Eh, Menachem Begin och eh, hans eh, kumpaner, de lät ju spränga ena flygen på King David Hotel. Det var, de ringde innan och varnade, men ingen tog dem på allvar och de sprängde bort högra flygen, jag tror det var högra flygen av hotellet. Men det är återuppbyggt och är idag kanske det mest kända hotellet i Israel. Det är det hotell där alla presidenter och alla eh, som kommer på statsbesök bor där. Kan vi ta lite grann ändå om den politiska eh, historien kring Jerusalem? För även om staden har varit helt ointressant av alla de här världsarvälden som har dominerat området i 2000 år då, så när det judiska folket kom tillbaka och fick en relation till landet och därmed också landet började blomstra och Jerusalem började blomstra så, så var också alla andra intresserade av Jerusalem. 
Jag skulle inte uttrycka det som att man fick en relation till landet, utan den relationen den har levt i 3000 år. Helt riktigt, men de fick en fysisk relation till landet på det sättet att de var här. Ja. Alltså... Så du kan ju lära känna någon som bor i USA ja. och vet väldigt mycket om och du kan också ha dina förfäder kan ha varit i USA och du har hört talas väldigt mycket om det. Men att gå omkring i landet, den relationen har de ju fått. Alltså... Alla möjliga arméer har marscherat upp fram och tillbaka här längs kusten och intagit hamnstäderna Jaffa och Akko och så vidare. Haifa. Men rent strategiskt så har det här inte varit så viktigt för dem. Och därför så under väldigt många hundratals år så förlorade Jerusalem i betydelse och blev en mycket liten stad. Förutom för de judar som fortfarande och som envist höll sig kvar här. För då var det så att eh, det som kallas för Västra muren Hakotel eh, Hamaravi på hebreiska de, det var det enda som fanns kvar av Salomos tempel. Och, och, ja, och av det andra, både det första och andra templet. Så där har judar alltid stått och begråtit att man förlorade landet, man förlorade templet. Och man inte kunde fullgöra gudstjänsten som i fornstora dagar. Och det, det är faktiskt en bön som vi säger fortfarande i synagogen. Att vi beklagar att templet inte finns där. Och att vi inte kan framföra våra offergåvor som i gamla tider. En general som faktiskt intog Jerusalem. Det var ju Allenby, den brittiska generalen, 1917. Och, men då fanns de här sionistiska strömningarna, strömningarna i, runt om, i, inte minst i Europa. Och eh, samma år som Allenby intog... Jerusalem så kom ju Bell för deklaration. Precis. Eh, brittiska utrikesministern säger då i ett brev att man ska skapa ett folkhem i det palestinska mandatet för judar. Det skulle bli ett judiskt folkhem. Så det var en, ett steg vi pratade om sionistkongressen förra programmet. Det här var ju också ett viktigt steg 1917, Belfordeklarationen. Som följdes upp sen av, av Sanremo-konferensen och också om NF, Nationernas förbund, föregångare till Förenade Nationerna, som ja. slog fast samma sak. Ja. Delvis kan man säga, det fanns ju modifieringar. Ja. Att judarna hade en historisk anknytning till landet. Absolut. Och... Man gör ju massor av arkeologiska utgrävningar här och man hittar ju hela tiden bevis om denna starka anknytning mellan det judiska folket och Jerusalem och landet Israel. Det är så i och med att armerna har marscherat här så om man gräver sig ner i jorden så, 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 liksom, så det blir det en historielektion. Ja, ja, ja. Ja, det är, det är precis det man gör. Man tar ett tvärsnitt och så ser man varje... Civilisation. Ja. Den ena på den andra. Och man kan till och med se om, om det var krig, om det, just den platsen intogs i strid och att det br förorsakade bränder och så vidare. Så att det, är, det är väldigt fascinerande. Och just nu så dammsuger de hela Judén och Samarien. Alla grottor kartläggs och man hittar eh, föremål, fantastiska föremål. Men det var ju så man hittade döda havsrullarna. De fanns i en grott där, ganska nära döda havet. I förra programmet så träffade vi Nachman Shai, eh, diasporaminister. Eh, och eh, han berättade ju om hur samhället... Det israeliska samhället har påverkats av alla dessa vågor av eh, Immigrant. immigranter. Men vi ska få också en lite mer modern analys hur situationen är idag. Ja. 
Och för det, det har ju ökat nu de sista åren. Ja, alltså det där har ju pågått under liksom ända sedan tanken på sionismen växte fram så har det pågått olika invandringsvågor. Man, man kallar det för första invandringsvågen, andra och så vidare. Och det har ju varit förföljda judar som har kommit från olika håll i världen. Och det senaste har ju varit eh, etiopiska judar och ryska judar. En miljon ryska judar kom ju när, när Berlinmuren föll och Sovjetimperiet rasade samman. Ja. Och nu kan man nog tänka sig att det kommer en ny våg. Och det är det som Nachman Shai pratar om. Därför att det här kriget som nu har utbrutit i Ryssland och Ukraina. Mellan Ryssland och Ukraina. Båda länderna har stora befolkning, judiska befolkningar fortfarande. Och eh, antisemitismen i dessa länder ökar. Och då vill många utvandra. Man, man pratar om att göra alia och eh, betydelsen av ordet alia det är att man går mot en högre höjd. Man betraktar alltså landet Israel och Jerusalem att det ligger högt och alia betyder att gå mot en höjd. Ja, vi låter Nachman Shai berätta om den aktuella situationen just nu. Can you say something about, I mean, the Jews in Ukraine? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you helping them to very much? Out? Well, since the war, actually, even at the eve of, in the eve of the war, for quite a long time, I've been working very closely with the uh, leadership of the Jewish community in Ukraine. There were around 200,000 Jews living in Ukraine. Uh, half of them were organized in, uh, under Chabad leadership and others were, were not associated with any institute and, and uh, we uh, managed to help them financially. We were the first to extend them financial aid before the war broke out uh, to help them to get shelter, transportation, food, medicine, anything they needed for the upcoming war. And since then, I've been talking to them f uh, every few weeks. And now we are working on, a, on the second phase of helping the Jews in Ukraine, which their situation is getting even worse and worse as a result of the entire situation in Ukraine. And even more than that, uh, now we have to pay attention to Jews who left Ukraine as refugees, and they are settled in neighboring countries, uh, including Germany, or, or um, the, the Austria, maybe some Hungary. in Hungary, Sweden, Poland. maybe in others, all, yeah. all over. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, 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 would we would like to keep them, uh, to keep their ties with Israel. Well, maybe one day will they, they will go back to Ukraine. But for the time being, we feel that we bear special responsibility for the life of Jews all over the world, and now specifically for those who were uh, forced to leave Ukraine and settled around around their, their homeland, their home, their home country. We read in the papers that some of them have made Aliyah. Yes. How many? Uh, between 25,000 to 40,000 came to Israel as Olim uh, Chadashim, as newcomers. Uh, but remember one thing which is, again, very important. The, the males the, the brothers, the, the fathers, the, 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 sometimes the children were forced to stay behind. Yes. Those are half families, one third of the family or two thirds of the family. They miss their relatives very much. So they are on the one hand settled in Israel, but on the other hand, they are talking to their dear ones all the time. And they are maybe once in a while, they even travel to Europe or their family members coming. I don't know if it's possible to meet or maybe they go back to Ukraine and then come to Israel. 
because uh, it's going to be very long. No one knows how long the, this crisis or this war will, con will, will continue. And meanwhile, they, they miss their families very much. It's the opposite about Russian Jews who are trying to get now from, from Russia, from their own reasons, and they, it's only about males because they were called for military service now yeah. and they're not necessarily very excited about it. So here's an, the other half of the picture. Here males are leaving Russia mm -hmm. and their families in many cases are staying behind. Interesting. Jewish, Jewish story. Jewish story. So there are a few thousands who came from Russia too. Now we try to expedite the process because they come to Israel according to what we call the law of returns, which gives immediately Israeli citizenship to any Jew who would like to come to Israel in any, any time, any stage of his or her life. That's called the lower return. It's, the, it's, a, it's a unique law, uh, which is typical to the state of Israel, which is a Jewish state, the state of the Jewish people. So they could exercise, they did already exercise their right, they come to Israel, and many others, there are 600,000 Jews living in, in Russia now and 200,000, much less now, in Ukraine. Each one of them is eligible anytime he or she would like to, to come to Israel, to get Israeli citizenship, Israeli ID, uh, to get some assistance from the government, housing, learning the language, education, and settle in Israel. The story of Israel is the story of millions of Jews who came from all over the world and settled here in, their, in our home, in our ancient home. Mm. Uh, we read also about uh, growing anti-Semitic uh, tendencies, both in Russia and, and also in Ukraine. Can you comment? Uh, historically, Ukraine was an anti-Semitism anti in, in Ukraine was very high. We all remember and we will never forget the history of Ukraine and the Jewish people we keep hearing that even recently when Israelis were arguing whether we should open the country for non-Jews to come as refugees to the country. My opinion was that they are allowed to come and they deserve it and we as a state of refugees. Don't forget the Jewish history. The Jewish history is also a history of refugees wandering around the world, especially in Europe. So we have a special responsibility for refugees. I'm not saying that they will have to or can settle here for the entire rest of, uh, of, the, of their life, but to give them temporarily uh, shelter, uh, food, uh, warm water to take a shower or to live here for, for some time until hopefully the war will stop or something will happen. Well, unfortunately, that doesn't look like it's going to end soon, but we have to be aware and to be sensitive and to show uh, that we are human beings and, and, and let them come in too. So in addition to the Jews who came to Israel and became Israelis immediately, those are not being given Israeli citizenship, but should be given a place to stay, a temporary place to stay, as I said, for a while. I know that you uh, live in the U.S. for some time, mm. and... Uh, the biggest Jewish population outside of Israel is in the U.S. Yeah, around six million people. What do you think? Uh, we read very disturbing articles about growing anti-Semitism yeah. uh, anti yeah. in 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 the U.S. Yeah, it's true, and 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 it's very worrying for us to watch the rise of anti-Semitism globally, and I would say especially in the United States. Uh, if you look at some surveys, some pieces of research that were made regarding anti-Semitism, you hear uh, that high percentage of Jews are concerned. Uh, students, specifically in a, in a search in research that I've just seen, express their concern about the rise of anti-Semitism in American university campuses. Uh, they are scared. They are literally scared. And they were exposed to anti-Semitism, something that hasn't happened to them in, a, in their earlier life. Uh, and it's coming, by the way, from right and left in, 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 in America. The number of cases, uh, well, mostly it's on online anti-Semitism, which is now very convenient, very easy, and you can hide beyond the uh, fake names, so no one knows who is the source of this, of that uh, uh, 
it's a fake story or whatever you carry, the content, you can produce any content. Sometimes, sometimes, very rarely, the technological companies like Facebook or Twitter or, 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 or Telegram or others wake up and take responsibility for the content. Usually they say, it's not our business. We are just providing the floor, providing the arena, and we have no involvement in that. And, that, uh, and they should, and they should. We urge them all the time. Don't stop uh, watching, reading, and cleaning the, 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 the social media from those uh, messages. But uh, they are not very eager because they, they live out of it. So that's their business, and uh, so they live it as, as is. Yes, there is a rise of anti-Semitism in the United States. Uh, last week, the whole world talked about Iran drones. I, Iran. Drones. Friday, also Israel attacked Damascus and destroyed an Ir uh, Iran drone factory. Israel, I would not specifically relate to no, this someone, event, but someone, in gen someone from somewhere. In general, we are conducting a, a, a certain war, a kind of war, but it's not an all-out war, against uh, Iranian uh, targets mainly in, 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 in Syria. We made it clear to them we don't want to let them get to the, close to the border and we don't want to let them equip uh, the Hezbollah with accurate uh, weapons, including uh, rockets and, and, and missiles, which they try very hard. Uh, we also uh, conducted all kinds of uh, operations against uh, Iran in the air, in the sea, uh, cyber, and, and other ways, uh, again, to slow down the pace of enriching uranium, which is so necessary in order to produce a nuclear bomb, uh, an atom bomb, in, in, in the future. Um, and we'll continue to do that. Whatever negotiation, there, there is any negotiation, there isn't, one day it's on, one day it's out, we have our own uh, goal, to prevent Iran from acquiring an, a nuclear weapon, and we'll do our best. Can you say something about the complexity in, when it comes to the Iran drones in Ukraine? Iran's involvement in the war is a, is a source of concern to us. Uh, the war is on development, which we didn't expect. Uh, Iran now is um, cooperating with Russia there's no way to deny it because it became a well-known well fact uh, that they are sending them arms, helping them to fight uh, Ukraine. I don't know what, more than the, drone, the Iranian drones, but maybe the, in, in other way, they, it was reported also they're going to send them ballistic missiles as well. Uh, well, we, we've been saying for, for years that the Iran is not only a source of... Uh, uh, um, concern, or I would say, uh, is not only a danger for the Middle East stability, but it can easily grow to a world concern. Uh, and, and now it was, was, has been manifested in, in, in the war between Russia and Ukraine. You can see that the Iranians are jumping into this war, which is far away from the border, but that's the character of the Iranian regime. They are just looking for opportunities were to use their uh, military might, and, and currently it's uh, it with Russia against uh, against Ukraine. They have been cooperating also with the Russians in Syria, as as we know, both helped the the Syrian government to uh, bring down the the, the rebels, uh, which were fighting against the Syrian government. So there's a history here between the two the two states. Uh, but we are very careful, as you know, Israel's policy vis-a-vis -vis the war between Ukraine and, and Syria, Russia is, has been very, very careful. Can you comment uh, about the uh, uh, plans to close down the Jewish agency in, in Russia? Yeah, we asked the Russians to let the Jewish agency continue its operation in Russia. We see no reason why they will have to leave the country. They were ordered by the government to Give, leave, leave, leave Russia and, and depart from, from there after scores of years of uh, uh, working with the, the Jewish community there, in some cases helping them to, to make Aliyah, to come to Israel. 
uh, the Russians were not uh, happy about that. And uh, now it's being the, the, the discussed in a, in, a, in a Moscow court and uh, the, the be decided by the, by, by the Russian by the Russian court, by the Russian judge. But it has been postponed already a few times. And uh, the Jewish agency, I, I, I feel very bad about that because um, we would like Jews to enjoy freedom of, to be free. And, and to be able to decide where they would like to live and what kind of life they would like to live. And, and being able to live Jewish life is, is, is one of the, I would say, the goal, the raison d'etre of the, of the state of Israel. But is Russia today stopping Jews from making Aliyah? I don't know about that. I know that there, there's a long line of Russian Jews who would like to come to Israel. The airplanes are full but there's no enough there's no enough number of uh, flights between uh, Russia and Israel but but the law there's a long line for for months waiting for the approval uh, to come to Israel and make Aliyah it's there's a lot of interest so the, we may end up with another thousands and thousands of uh, Russian Jews that will, will will end up in Israel let me remind you that around 30 years ago, in the early 90s, over one million Jews left uh, Russia and made Aliyah, immigrated to Israel. It's a huge number. And it created a boom for uh, Israel's no. economy. Absolutely. Uh, there are mainly uh, uh, people with high education, with uh, university education, for example, there were 40,000 medical doctors who came to Israel at the time. 40,000. Only 20,000 of them finally exercised the, uh, their profession, but in, in general there were 40,000 medical doctors. Ja, det var allt för denna gång om drömmen om Sion. Och se oss nästa vecka igen. Samma tid, samma kanal. I vår fyller Israel 75 år. Vi vill fira detta genom att färdigställa Rolf Wallenberg Park utanför Jerusalem. Rolf Wallenberg var en svensk hjälte som på uppdrag av UD räddade tiotusentals judar under andra världskriget. Rolf Wallenberg is an angel. He saved us. Come from heaven to save us and we go back to 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 to. I receive my life like like I pray. Vår målsättning är att Sverige ska bli det israelvänligaste landet i Europa. Parken är en viktig pusselbit i relationerna mellan Sverige och Israel. Fira med oss att den 2000-åriga drömmen om Sion har infriats. Fira Israel 75 år genom en jubileumsgåva. Alla som ger 750 kronor eller mer får ett jubileumsdiplom och en pin med Rolf Wallenbergs diplomatväska. Betala via Swish eller Bankgiro. Märk din betalning Israel 75 år.